The only thing Aya loves more than chemistry is her dog, Baxter. So when Baxter passes away one morning, Aya is devastated. Her parents tell her it's just the circle of life. Baxter was 14. He lived a good, long life. But that doesn't make Aya feel any better. That doesn't change that he won't be waiting to play when she gets home from school or licking her face while she watches TV. Aya decides that the circle of life is her new enemy, and she's pretty sure she can outsmart it. She does have the best science grade in her whole class. That night, Aya goes down to her grandpa's old chemistry lab in her family's basement. Her grandpa had told her never to mix chemicals without a formula, but she doesn't have time for formulas right now. She gets to work without so much as a glance at any chemistry books. She makes a gooey blue liquid and a gas that turns into glitter, but nothing that seems like it can bring something back to life. Just as Aya is about to give up, she finds a vial of liquid she hadn't noticed before at the bottom of her grandpa's equipment bag. She pours it into the beaker and stirs as fast as she can. A little bit of the mixture sloshes out of the beaker and onto the wood floor. Right in that spot, the dry planks of wood start growing leaves. Aya can't contain her excitement. She's just made a reanimation compound. She puts Baxter's collar in the beaker and stares for hours. Nothing happens. She sighs, disappointed. Why did she think she could do this? She's just a kid. The next morning, Aya is woken up by a familiar lick. She shoots up in bed to find Baxter sitting next to her, wagging his tail. Aya throws her arms around him. He's exactly the same Baxter. Well, his eyes are glowing a little green, but basically the same. After school, Aya runs home to play with Baxter, but soon she starts to notice that she's tired, really tired. As the night goes on, Aya realizes that everyone in the house is just as tired as she is. Her parents are too tired to make dinner. A cat is too tired to move. Baxter, on the other hand, has just as much energy as he always did. He eagerly licks Aya's face as she lies on the floor. A deep, uneasy feeling starts to consume Aya. This all feels like it might be her fault. Aya forces herself to walk back down to the basement. She scours her grandpa's books. Then, tucked between the regular chemistry books on ions and equations, she finds a thick, untitled leather book. It's so old the leather is cracked, and at the back is a section on reanimation compounds. She reads that reanimation compounds don't actually bring organisms back to life, but instead put organisms in a half-alive state characterized by glowing green eyes. Organisms in this state can't produce their own energy, so they must drain the energy from any living thing near them, plant, animal, or human, in order to stay reanimated. There's a big warning at the bottom of the page. Any reanimated organism must be quickly removed from its environment, or everything around it will fall into the same half-state, never to be fully alive again. Exhausted, Aya uses all her energy to lift Baxter and carry him outside. The closer she is to him, the more tired she is, but she knows what she has to do. Aya looks into Baxter's glowing green eyes. She takes him into the dense woods behind her house. Even if he's only half alive, Aya still loves him very much. She throws Baxter's toy deep into the thickest part of the woods. Baxter takes off after it. Aya collapses from the effort. Tears stream down her face. She knows the trees are so dense Baxter will never be able to make it back. On her way back to her house, Aya is feeling better. She can even walk at a normal speed again. As sad as it was to let Baxter go, it will be worth it to see her family back to normal. But when Aya gets home, her family isn't back to normal. They're just as tired as they were before. But Aya feels totally fine. Great even. Her eyes are glowing green.